I was just about to finish the last clip of this entire video and now it's bent. I built my dream setup two months ago in the corner of my bedroom. It has just enough space for two separate workstations. My first PC build powers the two monitors on the right and I switch between my personal and work computer on the left. As I've been using it, I've noticed a lot of flaws here and there. Foam panels keep falling off the wall, I can't see my PC very well underneath the desk, and the LED lights behind the desk broke. But the biggest flaw is the desk. It's a $90 one off of Amazon, it's flimsy, not very deep, and I'm pretty sure it's already bending. So for the first time, I'm gonna build a custom floating desk out of a butcher block, from designing and 3D rendering to assembling and installing. I'll show you the whole process, and then I'll take you on a tour of my remodeled bedroom desk setup. To get this transformation started, I hopped in Blender and ended up spending way too much time designing. After about two weeks, I had a detailed 3D model of exactly what I'll be building. I designed the corner space with my carpet, window, and wall skirting, then added the Art 3D and foam panels, then the wall-mounted stuff with an extra 15.6 inch monitor I'll be adding, and now the desk. I'll have two pieces of butcher block, one on top of the windowsill and one against the wall panels. The piece on the window will be held up by a single desk leg on one side and wall mount on the other side. Then the piece against the wall panels will be supported by two heavy duty wall mounts. Then I had some fun and added my PC and MacBook, then the peripherals, and then some decorations, and finally, the LED lights. The final renders came out pretty nice. But now it's time to figure out how to build this. So I hopped in my truck and took a trip to one of my favorite places, Home Depot, and hit my first roadblock already. I located the butcher blocks and asked someone where I could get it cut, but unfortunately, Home Depot doesn't cut butcher blocks. I bought the 98 inch butcher block because it'll be the cheapest price to create both pieces of wood. The main piece will be cut to 53 inches, keeping the same depth. The side piece will be made out of two pieces, 11 by 44 inch and 12 by 11 inch and secured together. This is one of those times I'm really grateful I've got a pickup truck. Once I got the wood back to my garage, I tidied up a bit, and thankfully my girlfriend's dad had a circular saw I could borrow. So I practiced cutting a few pieces of wood, and then I marked the cuts on the butcher block with a pencil and took a crack at cutting the main piece of the wood. I really don't want to damage this wood. I don't know why I stopped. I'm gonna keep, I'm nervous. I thought this would go smoothly, but it did not. Oh, uh, what the hell? No, no. What happened? Oh crap. The technique I used made the saw pull to the right and it started smoking. After I finished the main block, I ended up just freehanding the cuts for the side piece. It didn't come out perfect, but I don't really care if it's perfect. This is a this is a work of art. Keep telling yourself that, dog. Before the wood treatment, I took a break and worked on the setup. Taking apart this setup felt like I was losing a part of my soul, but things need to get worse before they can get better. This was pretty difficult because the cables were really fixed in place in a complicated way. I didn't do the best job. Cable management should be hard to put together and easy to manage, hence the name. After the cables and accessories were off the desk, I moved moved it out of my room and was left with an absolute mess. To make it even messier, I got the extra monitor pretty fast, so I decided to install it. I was pretty tired that day, so I didn't measure anything at all and just eyed it, which resulted in a lot of drywall damage. But who cares, because I covered it up with some 3D art panels anyways, so nobody will ever know, except you guys. I cleaned up the setup to be usable without the desk, since I still need to use my PC while I'm finishing up the desk, which is possible since everything is mounted to the wall. It was definitely a janky setup, but it'll work for now. Then I made my way back to the garage and started treating the wood. First, I filled some holes here and there with wood filler, let it dry, and then sanded it off with 60 grit. I realized 60 grit was too low, so I went up to 320 grit to get rid of some of the scratches I put on it. It. After the holes were filled, I went over all the pieces with 320 grit and then 1000 grit to make it super smooth. Doing this by hand was exhausting, but luckily my girlfriend's dad also had an electric sander. Thanks, Roger. After smoothing out all the sides of each piece, it's time to apply poly stain. Before applying, I wiped the wood down to get rid of the dust and then applied the first coat. I went with this dark color to match the top of the dresser and end tables in my room. Once it was dry, I sanded the pieces of the wood down again and repeated applying coats and sanding three times on all sides of each piece. This took a super long time and I was rushing a bit. I should have applied poly stain more slowly and spent a bit more time sanding down after coats, but once again, doesn't need to be perfect. It's art. Keep telling yourself that. Yeah, I'm done. Moving on. It's time to assemble 
assemble the desk. First, I secured the two pieces for the side desk together with these small brackets, stripping the screws like a pro in the process. I brought the wood upstairs and installed the single desk leg onto the left side of the wood. Then I installed the wall bracket to support the right side of the desk by securing it with drywall anchors to the 3D art panel wall. Hopefully that'll hold. Finally, I secured the wall bracket to the shelf. And now I can finally be able to see my PC fully when I'm getting work done. Since all the cable management will be below the side table, I can start on that now and then install the main desk after. First, I started by managing the cables coming from the monitor into these white mesh cable covers. The cables feed behind the gap between the side monitor and the wall. Then I secured the power strips to the bottom of the side table tucked away in the corner, which shouldn't be visible when I'm sitting down at the desk. Then the cables feed through a cable raceway to the PC. All that's left now is the main desk. The wall brackets finally came, and installing them was really easy with this simple trick. I measured it out, and the height of the wall skirting plus two of the 3D art panels plus the thickness of the desk equals the perfect height for a desk. So I just installed the wall brackets with the tops aligned with the bottom of the third 3D art panels from the ground. I made sure to install the brackets into the studs because the desk weighs about 50 pounds by itself. But I couldn't put all the screws in the studs because of the width of the brackets, so I used drywall anchors for the others. Once the brackets were in, I put the wall panels back on, then installed the desk. I had to add a few washers on the right bracket to make it perfectly leveled. Then I added some cool decorations and of course some more LED lights. And to hold my headphones I added this headphone anchor under the desk which I stained to have it match the color of the desk. So I was sent a new chair as well so I built it really quick and I'm hoping this helps with my posture. But right as I finished the setup and was about to film the tour, disaster struck. I went to water the plant on my wall shelf, fell off my chair and landed straight on the floating desk. <laughs> <laughs> and bent the table down. I was just about to finish the last clip of this entire video, and now it's bent. I was literally standing up here, leaning on like that. It just slips, and I just go boom. I'm surprised that it's not. It's still on the wall. That's crazy, dude. Because like 180 pounds coming down like super fast. Durability test one complete. <laughs> 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 Thankfully, the brackets didn't bend. The bottom of them just crushed into the drywall. So I just stuffed some cardboard to fill the crushed drywall gap and added washers until it was leveled again. Finally, it was complete. But before we get into the setup tour, go join my Discord community. Link is down in the description to stay up to date with what's going on behind the scenes. And big thank you to one of my earliest supporters, CJ Edits, for creating the Discord. So go get him to a thousand subscribers. All the links will be in the description. And for anything I don't mention, go check out my first video. All right, let's get into it. So the first thing we have here is the Saihu M18 desk chair. It's got a mesh back part here, and then it's got this nice little cushion along with these armrests. It has height adjustability, and you can lean back and forth and stuff like that. It's a really nice chair, very comfortable, and has been helping me out with my posture. So thank you to Saihu for hooking me up with this. Now let's move this out of the way. We're gonna start with the PC. If you watched my PC build video, then you know that this was my first ever PC, and it's packing a Ryzen 9 5900X and an RTX 3090 Ti. I've got Lee and Lee fans in here, a Lee and Lee case, and V-Color Prism Pro RAM, 64 gigs, and three terabytes of storage. Yeah, this was a really fun build, and on top of it, we've got some plants I got off of Amazon as well. This astronaut star projector was sent to me. I like to call it the Spaceman. It's a great product. The star projector comes out of the Spaceman's helmet, which is adjustable, so you can point it in any direction. It has a little base here that's like the moon's surface. There's buttons on the back, and I connected it to a pizza, so I can turn it off with a pizza. Can't turn it on with a pizza because the button are what turns it on, so maybe next version of the product could just turn on right when it gets power and be controlled via an app or something. Moving on, we got this Kilo light as well as a little coaster right here that's the same as my mouse pad on the desk. This light is also hooked up to an enabled plug so I can turn it on and off. Moving over here, we have my M1 Max MacBook Pro and then my work laptop. All the monitors are connected to my PC, but I switch between the two laptops on the main monitor by changing the input and switching my peripherals by clicking this button on my KVM switch. Coming out of my M1 Max MacBook Pro is a cable that was sent to me by AO High. It's one of the nicest cables I've ever had and it has this super cool coiled cable part. You can unscrew this connector part and then swap it out with different attachments. So I can attach this to a lightning charger or USB-C and right now I'm using it to charge my iPad Pro. It comes with a really nice case which I keep right here that has this nice little slogan on it. It's the future of creative power cables. Moving on to the peripherals. This is the GMMK Pro. It's a great keyboard but I really want to put some foam or some kind of 
of dampeners in it, so it's a little bit more thocky. What I really like about it is the volume knob here that I can mute, unmute, and adjust the volume. Over here, we have the MX Master 3S. This is the best mouse I've ever had, and I pretty much use it for everything. Moving on to the monitors, my main monitor is a 34 inch ultra wide, it's 1440p and 165 hertz. Then up here, I have a 24 inch monitor, 1080p and 165 hertz. Over here, we have a portable 15.6 inch monitor in vertical mode with 90 degree cable adapters underneath so they don't stick out. This monitor is VESA mount compatible, which isn't very common in these small monitors. One thing to note is I turn the top monitor upside down to minimize the bezels so there's barely a gap between the monitors. Next, we have these Edifier speakers. Great speakers for a great price at just around 100 bucks, keeping the white on black theme going. Over here, we have a cheap key light off of Amazon, nothing special. I like it and it works. Behind here is where I keep the remote for it because it's a magnet on the back. I also have a plant I put back here on top of the monitor mount and camera mount rig and a Govi Aura light below that for some more lighting. There's also another one of these anime lights under the monitor. This one's of Gone. And in front of that is this cool knife that I actually got at Walmart. But there's a funny story behind it, so that's why it's here. The last thing on the desk is this coiled aviator cable. I chose the gray one because it matches the gray keycaps on the GMMK Pro. For my microphone, I have the Shure MV7 right here attached to this Elgato low profile mic arm. I got this mic because it has USB and XLR connections. So for now, I'm gonna use it with USB. And then later when I upgrade and get an audio interface, I can use the XLR output. Low profile is great because I can move it like this and then it goes underneath the monitor like perfectly. So that's a really nice feature. Moving up here, we have this digital clock. You can't see the cable because it's behind here. I used black Velcro to cover up the wire there. And then I used white Velcro to cover up here. Just a bit of cable management. Up here on the shelf, we have a bunch of stuff that means a lot to me in different ways, and I'm not gonna go in depth with each one because they're super random. I do have a real plant up here. Everything else is fake. For LED lights in the room, I have a total of 17, which is absolutely wild. Huge thanks to Govi for sending me their new neon ropes for desks. It's a really nice LED strip. It's fully diffused, so it doesn't hurt your eyes or anything when you're looking at it. And it just goes on so smoothly on the corner of the desk, and they were able to send me two, so I have some on the windowsill desk as well. It gives it this really cool stacked look. I love Govi and it's crazy that they actually sent me some of their lights. So I'm looking forward to doing some collaborations with them soon because as you can see, I absolutely love Govi lights, like so much. Almost forgot, but the last thing I have in my setup is my AirPods Max on my headphone anchor under the desk, which are honestly extremely overpriced, absolutely not worth the money. Apple just continues to scam me. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video and it gave you some inspiration for your own desk setup. And remember, don't stand on revolving chairs. See ya. Oh!